Okay, now that we've introduced the code and seen how the code state gets transformed by the noise, it's time to talk about how we remove the error by making use of the fact that we now have some redundancy that we've introduced into our encoding. Huh? Okay, so let us talk about removing the error. Now, removing the error is really a two-step process. Right? The two steps that are involved is really the first one is really a diagnosis step. So I call that the syndrome measurement. Syndrome is uh, what you would find as formula being associated with diagnosis. And then the measurement essentially is how I would acquire that syndrome information. Huh? Okay, so this is essentially the diagnosis. Where you find out what error actually happened. And then once you have the syndrome, you have the diagnosis, what you then of course do is you recover. Okay, so this what you're really doing is you're removing the error uh, from your logical qubit. Yeah? Okay. Now, let me first focus on the syndrome measurement itself. Huh? Now, if you think about uh, the classical version of this three qubit code, which is uh, what I mentioned earlier as the repetition code, but with three bits now, okay? Actually, the way you do syndrome measurement is very easy. If you have the three bits classical code, you have the same two things. Your code words are 0, 0, 0. This is what you will call 0L, okay? This represents the zero logical state. The 1L is 1, 1, 1. Okay, exactly like the quantum case. Then what happens is that you have again some um, possibility of having a bit flip error. And then suppose that you have a bit flip error that results in the state, say, uh, being 0, 1, 0. Okay, suppose that this is the case. Huh? So you receive this after the noise. How do you actually remove the error? You will just take a look at this. It says 0, 1, 0. What you will do is you apply what people call majority voting, okay? Which essentially just means if the majority is zero, you read it as zero. If the majority is one, you read it as one. The majority voting here tells you that it's mostly zero here. So most likely it came from this state that is zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to fix the error by just going back to zero, 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 okay? So what do you do in this case? You look at the actual code word that you get, okay, the particular state that you receive that has been uh, exposed to the noise. You say that, okay, 0, 1, 0, majority of it is 0, so I decode it back to 0, 0, 0. Okay, so essentially you read the uh, code word that you get, you interpret what um, error most probably will have occurred, and then you fix the error. Yeah? Now in the quantum case, this actually doesn't work. In the quantum case, remember that your code state is not just 0, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 1. You have, in general, a linear superposition that is something that looks like this. Okay? Written in the 3 qubit form, this looks like that. 1, 1, 1. Yeah? Okay? Now, you can no longer simply say that, okay, let me read what state this is, because in general, your alpha and beta are unknown coefficients to you. And when you try to read this in what we will call the computational basis, meaning read whether it's not the 0, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 1, what happens is that you're going to destroy the coherences between the two states. You're essentially losing the information about alpha and beta, and that's really where your logical qubit lies, okay? So in the quantum case, unlike the classical case, you cannot directly just try to read the state, say, in the computational basis, and then do some sort of majority voting. So we need to be a little bit more clever than that in order to be able to do this uh, error diagnosis. But in order to figure out what you need to do, um, let us take a closer look at what really happens to your code space, the states that lie in your code space, when you have the different kinds of errors happening. So let me write, uh, let me draw a little table. Here I put the actual error that is happening, okay? Then here I put, suppose that your state lies in the span of uh, what's gonna come below, uh, okay? So if you have no error, 
Okay, the situation where we had just identity operator acting on all three qubits. The state, because it comes in in this logical state, this is something that is in the code space, which is we have seen earlier is the linear span of this uh, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Okay, so that's what I'm going to write here. If there's no error, my state is in the span of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Okay? Now, suppose um, the error that happened is actually x1. Okay? What this means is that you have a bit flip error on your first physical qubit. Huh? Okay? If this happens, my state, which is originally in the linear span of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 becomes now in the linear span of, I flip this first qubit, so it becomes 1, 0, 0, and then 0, 1, 1. Okay? And then I can continue to see what happens if I have an x2 error. So same thing now, I flip the second qubit, leaving the first and the third qubits alone. 1, 0, 1. And then the last one is with an x3 error. Okay, and then I get 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, now why did I write all of this out in this particular manner? What you want to do is to make the following observation. Okay, in this case, whether or not the state uh, is so well, in general, the state is not linear combination of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, but both of these states have this property that the first two qubits are in the same state. Okay, whether or not it's the 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, the first two qubits are always in the same state. The second and third qubits are also always in the same state. Yeah, okay, so 1 and 2 qubits are in the same state. Okay, same for 2 and 3, yeah, okay, they're also in the same state. Huh? Let me just write it in this short manner. Now, if I look at the x1 error, what is happening now is you observe the following. Whether or not you're in this state or this state, you find that the first and the second qubits are now in a different state. First and second qubit are in a different state. But your second and third qubits are actually still in the same state, yeah. Okay, so let me write now as 1 and 2 are different. Okay, and then 2 and 3 are the same. Let me fix this and write the same. Yeah. Okay, and then I go on, right? You have an x2 error. Now 1 and 2 are different. 2 and 3 are also different. Different. 2 and 3 are different. Okay, and then the last one is 1 and 2 are the same, 2 and 3 are different. Yeah. 1 and 3 are different. Okay, why did I do this? You see that once I've translated into this particular portion that asks whether or not your first and the second qubits are in the same state, and then whether or not the second and third qubits are in the same state, this characterization applies to both states at once, okay? And if I come back to what I was saying earlier, that if I want to figure out what error has happened, I must find out about the error in a manner that does not destroy the coherence between the 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, yeah, okay? What that actually translates to is the fact that I cannot find out whether or not I'm really in the state 0, 0, or am I really in the state 1, 1, 1. Yeah, instead, I need to ask the property is uh, sort of the same for both of these states. Now, and that property right now is the following 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Both states have this property that 1 and 2 qubits are the same, 2 and 3 qubits are the same, and so on. Yeah, okay. So, at the end of the day, what I will do is that this is how I will figure out the diagnosis of my error. This is going to be the basis of my syndrome measurement, where I'm simply asking the question. Are qubits 1 and 2 in the same state? And then I ask, are qubits 2 and 3 in the same state? Right? Depending on whether or not those answers are yes or no, I know that I'm in one of these four options. And by asking the questions that way, whether or not the qubits are in the same state or different, I'm never finding out whether or not the two qubits are in the zero state, or the two qubits are in the one state, for example, or one of these combinations of 1, 0, or 0, 1.
Okay, and that's going to be the basis of how we build our syndrome measurement. So with this, actually, it's very easy to understand what is it that we need to do for the syndrome measurement. Huh? So essentially, we just need to ask whether or not the first and two, the, the first and the second qubits are in the same. And uh, what I mean by this is whether or not they are in the same computational basis states, like zero, uh, zero, zero, and one, one. Yeah. Or are they in a different state where one is one zero uh, or zero one? Yeah, okay. So that's what we're going to do as our syndrome measurement. We're going to ask two questions. Okay, this is ask two questions. Okay, the first question is are uh, qubits one and two in the same computational state? Okay, and then the second question is. Uh, qubits two and three in the same computational state. Yeah. Okay. And then I will have my diagnosis, meaning that this tells you what is the error that has actually happened. And then later on, I will add in a piece that has to do with the recovery. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of a space. So what I'm going to do is that um, I'm going to sort of write it as plus one means yes, okay, and then minus one means no, yeah, okay. Now, suppose you get, so now I'm doing the syndrome measurement, you know, I'm asking these two questions, I will explain to you in a little bit how I really ask this question in an experiment, but suppose now I'm asking the question, are one and two the same, are two and three the same, and then I get uh, all the possibilities of my answers, where I have this is yes, this is also yes, I have this being yes, this is no, and then I have no, yes, and then both are no. Okay? So suppose I manage to ask all these questions, then actually what I do in order to diagnose what is the error, I come back to the earlier table that I have where if both things are yes, okay, that corresponds to both one and two qubits are in the same state, two and three qubits are in the same state. That is this particular version where I have no error. Yeah? So no error. That's the diagnosis. Okay? Now if one and two are the same, but two and three are different, I come back here, I look down the list, is this case. Okay? This is now x3. That's what my diagnosis is minus one and plus one, so this is different, this is the same, different, and the same, that's in fact x1. Okay, and then the last one where both are different, that's this version, which is x2. Okay, so that's how you actually go from the asking these two questions, getting the answers, and then looking back at what you expect to be the uh, answers based on what error has happened, and then you figure out what exactly is the diagnosis that you have. Huh? Now, how do you actually ask these questions in practice? In fact, you can, I'm going to draw a little circuit diagram, which is how you would uh, try to do the syndrome measurement actually on the three qubits that you have. Huh? So I have my three physical qubits. Okay, these are the three physical qubits that's carrying your logical qubits. Yeah. What I'm going to need are ancillary qubits because I want to do a measurement but I don't want to actually measure my three physical qubits because measuring these three physical qubits is like uh, directly observing the state in the computational basis and you're going to destroy the coherences that really carry the information about uh, the encoded information itself. Huh? So I'm going to need ancillary qubits and these are the ancillary qubits. Okay, and I'm going to insert the, um, the things that you need to do. Huh? So. Um, let me label qubits 1, 2, and 3, okay? These are then the ancillary qubits A1 and A2, yeah? Okay. So how do you ask these questions whether 1 or 2 are the same? It turns out if you sit down and uh, work through the circuit itself, it's actually all you need are really C0 operations that do this, okay? I will explain in a moment why this is the correct thing to do, yeah? Okay, and I'm in fact uh, preparing this in the state zero. This is also prepared in the state zero. Okay, 
I'm going to do two C nodes that connect qubit 1 and qubit 2 with my ancillary qubit A1. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the ancillary qubit A2, but now connecting data qubit 2 and data qubit 3. Okay, after this, I'm going to just measure. In fact, it will be a Z measurement, meaning I'm doing a computational basis measurement, asking whether or not these qubits are in the state 0 or the state 1. Yeah. Okay, and then the output, if it's in the state 0, will be plus 1. If it's in the state 1, it will be minus 1. Now, so this is how I get the classical output from this single measurement. Okay, so let me say a little bit why is it that I connect the two C nodes and it asks this question of whether or not um, qubits 1 and 2 are the same. Remember that you have, if now I'm just focusing on qubits 1 and 2, okay, I'm ignoring qubits 3 at the moment. So if I have qubits 1 and 2 being the same, okay, either like this or like this, okay. Now if you look at it, the C naught, if you recall, is something that applies a bit flip if the control qubit, which is now qubit 1 for this particular C naught, the control qubit is in the state 1, you apply a bit flip to this ancillary qubit. If the um, control qubit is in the state 0, nothing actually happens to your ancillary qubit. Okay? So what do these two particular C nodes uh, do for this ancillary qubit? I started my ancillary qubit in the state 0. I apply two C nodes. If um, qubit 1 was in the state 0, nothing happens. And if the qubit 2 is also in the same state 0, again, nothing happens. I come out as the 0 state. I get a plus 1 uh, as my output, as my uh, answer for my z measurement. Okay. The same, you can also check that the same happens for 1, 1. Because in the 1, 1 case, actually what happens is that if qubit 1 was in the 1 state, it applies a bit flip here. But then qubit 2 is also in the same state uh, 1. It applies again a bit flipped. So you go from 0 state to the bit flip is 1 here, and then it bit flips back to 0. So again, you come out with this plus 1 uh, as your measurement result. Now, for the opposite case where there are actually two different states, qubits 1 and 2 are in two different states, you have this situation where this is cube, uh, qubit 1 is in the 0 state, it doesn't do a bit flip. Okay, so it stays as the 0 state here. Now it encounters qubit 2. Now this one does a bit flip because this is now state 1. By the time it comes out here, this is in the state 1 now, and it's going to trigger the minus 1 uh, result. Yeah, and you can work through that this also triggers a minus 1 result. Yeah? So this is going to give you a plus 1. Uh, measurement result at the end. This one is going to give you a minus one measurement result at the end, which is exactly what we needed. This is the case where qubits one and two are the same. So you get the plus one, which is the yes, they are the same. These two are the cases where they are different. You get a minus one result, which means no, they are not the same. Huh? Okay, so this is in fact how you would do this. Uh, you ask this first question. The second question is asked in exactly the same way, except that now you use a different ancillary, also prepared in the zero state, but then you are now addressing the qubits 2 and 3, which is the one that you're asking the question of. Okay? So this is how you do the syndrome measurement, actually, in practice. No? Now, once we have this syndrome measurement result, we have done the diagnosis, then it's actually very easy to see what to do when you want to do the recovery. Remember that I said that Removing the error is really a two-step process. Okay. Um, so this is a recovery operation. Yeah. The two-step process requires you to first do a syndrome measurement and then you do the recovery. Okay. And the recovery is very easy since you know what is the error that has happened, why this is what your guess is. What you do is you just undo that particular uh, error operation. Huh? So the recovery operation, if you have no error, actually you don't do anything. Don't do anything means applying the identity operation. Okay. If your diagnosis was the X3 error, all you need to do is to apply a bit flip again to X3 to the qubit uh, number 3, so that you flip the qubit 3 back to what it was originally. 
okay, that this will reverse this particular error that has happened. Similarly for the others, you just reverse exactly what is your error. So that's your recovery operator. Okay, so we have phrased um, the syndrome measurement in terms of asking questions. Yeah. But it may be more familiar to you rather than talk about asking questions. A measurement may be uh, more familiar as measuring some particular observer or some particular operator. Yeah. So let me first remind you about this uh, connection between the observable, also the eigenstates, as well as uh, the uh, measurement itself. I come back to this uh, single qubit measurement here. I'm just talking about this case when I'm measuring the Z observable. This is why there's a Z here. The Z observable, I'm measuring this on this single qubit, this ancilla A1. Okay. We get the outcomes either plus one or minus one. And usually we will talk about this in the following way. We will just say that we are measuring Z. Okay, and in what sense are we measuring z? I'm asking the question, are we in the plus one eigenstate? Okay, or are we in the minus one eigenstate of z? Okay, the plus one eigenstate of z is actually the zero state. The minus one eigenstate is the, is the one state. Yeah. Okay. So when I talk about getting the outcome plus one, I really mean that I've done this z measurement and I've gotten the state zero, you know, which is the plus one eigenstate, and that's how I label my result as being plus one. Yeah. Then if I got minus one, it's really because my measurement has gotten the result of one as my uh, eigenstate that I, I obtained from my measurement, and then that gives me this outcome minus one. You know? Okay, so that's all of the one qubit situation. But here I want to rephrase my questions again also as uh, measuring some observable. But now these observables are really on three qubits. Yeah. Okay, so let me go through a little bit on how to think about that. Yeah? Now, remember that uh, what I'm really doing is when I do the measurement, I'm asking about eigenstates of my observable. Okay. So if I look at this, these two states, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, yeah, if you sit down and work this out for yourself a little bit, you'll find that these are actually the plus 1 eigenstates of this, uh, just looking at the first two qubits itself, they're the plus 1 eigenstates of this operator, z1, z2. Okay. This z1, z2 notation, I hope you recognize by now, can also be written as z, z identity. Yeah, so I uh, do the observable z on qubit 1, on qubit 2, and then the identity, I do nothing on qubit 3. No? Okay. These two states, you can actually work out for yourself that they are the plus 1 eigenstates of z1, z2. Okay. Both of them are plus 1 eigenstates of z1, z2. Yeah. In fact, because of symmetry between the three qubits, you immediately should also recognize that if I write down this observable z2, z3, these are also the plus one eigenstates of z2, z3. Okay. Then I go through the list and figure out whether or not these are plus one or minus one eigenstates of your these two operators. And it's easy to see whenever these things are different, in fact, it's a minus one eigenstate of z1, z2. Okay. Now I look at the second and third qubit, these are the same states, same states, actually they are the plus one eigenstates of z, z3. Okay, and so on. Huh? So this one I will be able to write down that is minus one, minus one. Okay, and then this will be, these two are the same. So this is plus one, and then this one is minus one. Yeah. Okay, one here goes through this. You find yourself arriving at this table which is exactly corresponding to the one on top. Okay, we have a little rearrangement because I had these in a different order than the ones that is here. Okay, what this actually is saying to you is that I can draw this parallel where asking whether or not our qubits 1 and 2 the same really corresponds to measuring this observable z1, z2. Okay. 
and then asking whether or not qubits 2 and 3 are the same corresponds to this particular observable where I measure z2, z3. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a quick translation from asking questions into the actual observables that I measure in order to do my syndrome measurement.